One day I was playing Papa Louie 2, and I realized that, like all games with a power-up system, some skills were undeniably better than others. I thought it would be interesting to rank these skills because I'm pretty sure that this is actually the first Papa Louie skill ranking on the internet. There are 6 skills in Papa Louie 2 and 6 skills in Papa Louie 3. Some are repeated while some are replaced. Of course, because this is a personal ranking, it's going to be biased. These rankings are primarily based on flexibility and how useful I find the skills in general. I'm aware that these skills were created only for specific missions and obstacles, while I am mainly ranking them on how useful they are outside of their designated situations. If you don't know what Papa Louie is, that's okay. It's basically a traditional platformer with enemies you have to kill in order to save people. I'll explain the skills I'm talking about as we go along. So, for the tier list. In 10th place, we have the Marvelous Pushing skill, found only in Papa Louie 2 because Flipline Studios probably realized how horrible it was and decided to remove it in Papa Louie 3. Pushing is one of the skills that relies on the level layout and can only be used when there's a rock around, turning characters with a pushing skill into characters that have no skill when there are no rocks around for them to push. This is by far the least flexible power-up, and I cannot fully express my anger at how my girl Cory was absolutely butchered by being given this horrific skill. Flipline knows this skill is bad, and in Papa Louie 2 it's used the least amount of times. Only 4 missions out of the 50 require the pushing skill. This means that for the 6 levels that have no rocks, characters with the pushing skill are skillless. The only pro is that rocks are super obvious to spot, so you know when you're supposed to use the skill and it's easier to complete missions. The crawling skill from Papa Louie 2 is in 9th place. Like the pushing skill, crawling is 100% reliant on surroundings and, like the pushing skill, crawling is not a skill in Papa Louie 3. There's not really much to say about crawling other than the fact that people with the crawling skill must have balls of steel because it's not easy to go into a tiny, enclosed, vent-like space with no ventilation or lighting just to get a couple of coins for someone's new outfit. In 8th place is the wall jump skill from Papa Louie 2, also not found in Papa Louie 3. As I was writing this, I realized that the three lowest ranked skills are all skills from Papa Louie 2 that were replaced in Papa Louie 3. I wonder why. Moving on, I sort of feel like wall jump was thrown together last minute. The icon for wall jump is literally just a capital W. Wall jump is not really useful unless there are two walls right next to each other, and chances are, when there are two walls right next to each other, you're supposed to go up them for a mission. Other than that, there are really only a couple of niche uses for wall jump, and I guess it looks sort of cool. In 7th place, we have the first new skill introduced in Papa Louie 3. Wall climbing is wall jumping's replacement and actually has an acceptable icon. But although wall climbing seems super cool at first, there's really no use for it other than when it's supposed to be used. Like yeah, you can climb that wall over there and yes, no one's going to stop you, but what's the point of climbing that wall over there? So you can slide down afterwards? Sixth place is dashing. Dashing is Papa Louie 3's remake of the pushing skill, which is evident by the fact that its icon is just a recolor. Like climbing, dashing is not reliant on environment, and as a bonus, dashing can be used offensively too. Dashes take out marshmallow stacks in one go and are basically an improved attack. Unfortunately, it's a bit clunky to use in terms of cooldown and activation. You need to be crouching before you dash, meaning that you can't use it on slopes, nor can you spam it easily. It's hard to control and you'll frequently end up overshooting, which could send you off platforms. It also sends you past enemies, meaning that your back will be turned to the enemies you weren't able to take out with your first dash. However, it's an upgrade from the previous skills that could not be used offensively at all. If you've played the Papa Libby platformer games before, at this point you might be wondering why there are 10 items on this list when only 3 skills of the original 6 were replaced. Well, you're about to find out. In 5th place, we have the losers without any skills. You'd expect these characters to either be in last place or not on this list at all, but I believe that they have their own special skill, which would be called Disappointment. Whenever you saved one of these characters in earlier levels and their special introduction screen appeared, you'd pray to God and hope that they had some sort of usefulness. You stared at the screen and waited for a special skill box to slide into view. But it never did. And you were forced to deal with the cruel reality and bitter disappointment that formed as a result. These guys were the ultimate trolls, and they destroyed more souls than any of the skills mentioned beforehand. I'd like to sincerely thank Flipline Studios for reducing the number of skillless normies from 8 in Papa Louie 2 to 6 in Papa Louie 3. One of the reasons why I consider Papa Louie 3 to be harder than Papa Louie 2 is because Papa Louie 3 contains a swimming feature that is terrible, as swimming features often are. When swimming, you move much slower, you can't attack, you're constantly floating upwards, and movements become much harder to control. However, the 4th place swim boost skill resolves two of these problems. Swim boost is basically a dash underwater, except much more spammable. 
Swim boost can be used offensively and is the only way to remove hostile underwater mobs. It also pushes you forward, making moving much easier. Of course, swim boost cannot be used on land, so it's a useless ability when not in the water. Swimming is so bothersome, however, that I've decided to place swim boost above dashing. Swim boost is tied for first place for the most number of times needed for missions. Nine missions in Papa Louie 3 require swim boost. In third place, we have the skill held by Papa Louie himself, gliding. Gliding was originally my favorite skill because it's really fun. It makes navigating in certain levels much easier, especially balloon obstacles, and the initial glide start almost gives you a double jump. The reason why it's not higher is because of its lack of flexibility. You can't attack while you glide, increasing movement but restricting offensive capabilities. The ground pound skill is in second place because of how overpowered it is offensively. Ground pound is found both in Papa Louie 2 and Papa Louie 3, but Flipline probably realized how broken it was and locked it behind level 6 in Papa Louie 3. Out of all of the skills, Ground Pound has by far the shortest cooldown. I'm not even sure if it has a cooldown. In order to use Ground Pound, you need to jump first, but after your first Ground Pound, all subsequent uses only need you to press the down button. In this way, Ground Pound becomes a simple CPS test as your only limit to using Ground Pound is how fast you can spam the down button. Ground Pound is the fastest way to take out Burgerzillas and party subs. In Papa Louie 2, it almost seems to make you invincible from the sides and bottom of the hitbox, and you can do some very strange things with Bako Bars and Bako Burns. Unfortunately, this was too broken, and it was nerfed in Papa Louie 3 where you can take hits from the side. This skill is ranked so high because of how utterly comical it is. Nothing is quite as funny as taking out a Burgerzilla in one second with Kahuna and his always visible sadistic grin. In first place is the double jumping skill, which was so broken that Flipline Studios locked it behind level 7 in Papa Louie 3. Like gliding, double jumping is great for navigation and is fantastic for people with no patience like me who absolutely cannot wait for the stupid balloon to reach its ending point. You might find it quite ironic, however, that the skill with no offensive capabilities placed so high on a raking base mostly off of offensive capabilities, and that is because double jump removes the need for offensive capabilities. If you're tired of spamming the space button, you can use the double jump skill to jump over all of the enemies, foregoing the need to attack anything at all. I personally find the double jump skill to be more polished than gliding because double jumping gives you more air and because gliding is a bit slow. Furthermore, because you can attack in the air in the Papa Louie platformers, double jumping in a way gives you more offensive openings than any other skill. Double jump also allows you to reach enemies in the air that you wouldn't usually be able to get rid of, something that gliding cannot give you. So that's my tier list. I'm definitely not a reliable authority on the Papa Louie games, I've never once beaten Papa Louie 3 but I still think that my ranking is fairly sensible. I'd love to hear other thoughts and opinions on the skills, for as interesting as I find it, Papa Louie is not a very widely discussed topic. Thank you for watching.